In this tutorial, we're going to learn about the new simulation nodes. Then we're going to use them to build a shooting star effect. And the best part about this is that even if you've never tried geometry nodes before, you could make this really cool effect. Here we are in Blender 3.5 Alpha. This is the new simulation nodes branch. This won't work in any other versions of Blender, so make sure you have this version. You can get it from the link in the description. Head to the geometry nodes tab and get rid of the spreadsheet. This version of Blender has the new simulation nodes. Select the cube and hit new to make a new geometry node modifier. Hit shift A and add simulation simulation input node. A, a quicker way to add nodes is hit shift A, right click on the search and choose assign shortcut. Hit Q and now you have got a shortcut for that. So I can just hit Q and add a new node. Add a simulation output. The simulation nodes form a basic loop. This geometry here is shows the geometry from the previous frame. Add a set position node and put 0.1 in the Z offset. Now when you hit play, the cube will slowly move upward. To reset the simulation, just go back to frame 1. And the way this works is that the geometry comes in from here, goes into the loop, gets offset by point 0.1, goes into the output node, the output node sends the geometry back to this node. And this is really cool because you can use it to create effects that build on the previous frame, like the shooting star effect we're going to make. So first thing to do is name this star and give this mesh a name too. And we will not need the group input anymore or the set position. Hit Q and search for a points node. Set the radius to 1. Put that in here. And if you're not seeing your changes, you may need to return to frame 1 again or hit play and then pause it and return to frame 1 again. The next thing we're going to do is add more geometry at each frame. So each frame will add a new point with a join geometry node. Add the join node, hit Q and add another point node. If you hit play, you won't notice anything, but it's adding a new point every frame. We're going to add an empty to control this. Shift A, empty, sphere. Name it control. And to keep the nodes from disappearing, just select your star object and click this little pin. Now when you select other objects, your node tree will stay open. Drag the control object into your nodes. Put the location into the position on this point. So every frame, a new point will be joined in at the position of the empty. And these don't need to be in the loop. Things can feed into this loop area, but nothing is allowed to leave it. So if I hit play and then move the control object, you'll see it's adding a new point every frame at the location of the control. Hit pause, go back to frame 1, for your position. Next, add a set radius node set point radius. We'll use this to make the points get smaller over time. Add a radius node and plug that into the radius. If you hit play now, you'll see that it's exactly the same because we're simply setting the radius to the radius that already exists. We're not changing anything. But if we subtract something from this with a math node, Let's subtract point 0.1, then every frame, the radius will be point 0.1 smaller. And you can see that works, but the points quickly scale in the opposite direction, which is not what we want at all. To fix that, we can delete them after the scale reaches 0. Add a delete geometry, put that in the loop. Drag out from the selection and add a less than 
change it to float and plug the radius in. Now when the radius is less than zero, the point will be deleted. Hit play again and give it a try. Much better. You can control how many points there are by adjusting this subtract value. I'll put it at 0 0.05 to get more points. A longer trail. Now this looks cool, but we can't actually render it because it's just points. And this is just Blender's visualization of points. We need to actually put a real mesh there. To do that, we'll use an instance on points node and connect an icosphere. And it looks a bit choppy, so I'll turn the subdivisions up to two. And add a shade smooth. Now we have this big tube effect, which is not quite what we want. We need it to have the same scale effect that we have on the points. To do that, we'll need to sample the radius value with a sample index node. Plug in this geometry, grab a new radius node, and you also have to plug in an index node so it knows which point to get the radius from. And just plug that into the scale. And there we go. I found that this effect is really cool in liquidy if you add a remesh modifier. And it won't work right away, and that's because you need to add a realize instances to turn your geometry into real geometry. And make sure you turn on smooth shading and turn up the voxel size a little bit. Like, that looks good. And now if you move the control object around. I have this really neat, almost liquid effect. Now let's set up some materials. Select the star object, go to the material tab, name this star, switch from principal BSDF to an emission, and make the color bluish, turn the strength to like 10, and go to rendered view, and you'll see the materials not showing up yet. That's because once something has been remeshed, you have to set the give it its material again. To do that, we'll make our own material modifier, add a new geometry node modifier, unpin this so we can see it, hit new, name this set material, and put in a set material node, set material, and just plug it in to the output. Now you can just set any material here. We'll pick star. You can see the material is showing up. Go up here to the render settings and turn on bloom to get that awesome glow. And we won't need this light anymore. And go to the world and put the strength to zero. And you can turn that off. Control A play. Awesome effect. If you want to make an animation, Head to the camera view, lock the camera to view, and get it where you want it. I'll go right there. And don't forget to turn that off again. Hit N to close that. And we won't need this anymore, so just right click, join areas, click on the one you want to get rid of, and to animate this. Just going to go to the Layout tab here, turn on Auto Keyframe, go back to Frame 1, hit I to set a Location Keyframe, make sure this is on the Empty, the Control Object. Now if you hit Play, you can simply record your animation. You can see it's making a lot of keyframes. And now I'm going to turn off auto keyframe when I play. There's my awesome animation. And we can smooth that out a lot. Go up here and drag out a new view. So 
switch it to the graph editor. Got all these keyframes. Go to key and hit sample keyframes to make sure there's a keyframe on every frame. And if you go to key, smooth keys, it'll just smooth it out. You can do that a bunch of times. Hit shift R to just do it again and again and again. Now your animation is a lot smoother. And we can go back to rendered mode. We don't need this anymore. And that's it. You learned how to use the new simulation nodes to make a shooting star trail effect in Blender. If you like this video, you might also like my new newsletter, The Blend, where I share weekly Blender tips and tricks and breakdowns, all kinds of cool stuff. You can check that out with the link in the description. Thanks for watching.